Welcome to the catch-up episode of the Campus Edge. Where we catch up on some of the older packages we haven't had a chance to air yet. Don't worry though, they're all as new as a fresh bottle of old mustard. And does mustard ever really go bad? I'm glad you asked. That's one of the many things we're investigating this episode. That's right, along with Girl Scout crews, alternative living conditions, a butler teacher, tutors, and most importantly, what were all the cool kids up to over spring break? All of that and more. On the Campus Edge. What do you know about mustard? It's one of the oldest spices known to man. You know what's spicy? Spring break. I'm inclined to agree. You know, I did a story on spring break a while ago. Really? Why don't we take a look? Here at Butler, we get students from all over, but there's one thing they all have in common. Spring break. That is trips, of course. Check out these vacation tips and tricks. For BCTV Channel 20, I'm Jessica Morgan. So what are Butler students doing over spring break? Let's find out. My friends and I are going down to South Padre in Texas for spring break. This is my first time. Like many Butler students over spring break, they plan to go out of town. So what are they doing to prepare? Well, we had to figure out our arrangements, like who's going to drive down there and what, where we're going to be living at while we're down there. For living, there are some options. But either way, planning can help you save. Booking it online is going to be cheaper, but always call and make sure your reservation goes through because it doesn't always go through. The house, we have a lot of people renting it with us, so it'll make the cost easier and cheaper for the, for the rest of us. Also, when planning on leaving town, you need to think of your transportation. Uh, we'll be driving someone's car down there. It'll be cheaper and easier. Be sure to be on the lookout for student discounts to save some money. Uh, we're going to go see a couple concerts probably and then just hang out on the beach most of the time. And then for the concerts, we tried looking up to see if there was any college discounts that we could use to make it cheaper for us. Some places also require a special payment like hotels, resorts, and houses. I think you're supposed to be 21 to be able to book the hotel and to check in. So, I think if you're under 21, you have got to have someone who's over 21 with the room booked under their name. You can pay cash, card, and they don't accept checks. Since many go out of town to popular places such as Padre, Table Rock, Colorado, and other states, hotels and living situations can get booked fast. To avoid this, when should you book a reservation? When planning a spring break trip, it's best to do it a month before in advance. No matter where you're going, these tips can be applied to any spring break trip. For BCTV Channel 20, I'm Jessica Morgan. Spring break is like a nice bottle of mustard. Because it lasts forever? No, because it was the first cultivated by India and later picked up by Britain. Ah, oh, right. Just like how we stole spring break from the Valley Girls. And much like how Valley Girls have squad, our school has CRU. Hey, didn't Emily Jordan cover that? As a matter of fact, she did. Roll the package. I'm Campus Edge reporter Emily Jordan. This week, I interviewed members of the Campus Crusade for Christ, or CREW. Here, students can find encouragement with other believers who are their age. Alan and Rachel Bushnes have been volunteering at CREW for four years now. And the people is what makes the meeting so fun. Let's take a look. Like, once I start coming, then I start realizing how many people come to this. And I thought it was pretty cool, so I just started coming. What about crew during like the first week of school, like my first year here, um, during the sign up, like the club sign up? Through Rachel and Ellen, there are Host, they lead the group and they go to my church actually and they were telling me about crew and I definitely wanted to join. I heard about crew through my boy Arius, you know, 
He a God-loving man, so am I, so he was like, you should check it out. The people, definitely, and also um, Alan's, what he talks about. Yeah. For, for yeah. me, I like it that people can grow, that people can really um, build relationships with one another, and that's really powerful, and it's an awesome thing that this college has. What makes the meetings fun for me is uh, getting to socialize with people and uh, getting to know more people and finding out you know, that it's more people like me that loves God. So. I like interacting with people, you know, talking about the Lord and whatnot, and uh, there's a... Uh, the activities they do is always fun and interesting, so... I love the people, first of all. Um, I've made great friends here. They're lots of fun, and I love Alan's talks and how he goes through the Bible and teaches us new things. It's really great, and I learn a lot. It's a way that people can uh, build those relationships, hold each other accountable, because everybody's struggling to find a purpose at this point in their lives. And it's something powerful, and it'd be something for everybody to get involved. I love coming to the meeting. It was just like my highlight of my week. You get to see so many different people like experiencing Christ and growing in Christ and like mm -hmm. glorifying Him and their passion behind it and like seeing we have so many people that have grown over time and being a part of so many people. Yeah, it's cool seeing others and then your own transformation within yourself. No matter how full the chairs may seem, there's still room for you. Crew meets Tuesdays at 7 right here in the Welcome Center. See for yourself how lives are being changed. For BCTV Channel 20, I'm Emily Jordan. My bad. And cut. Well, they sure look like they know how to party. Much like people, mustard parties in numbers. It can take up to a thousand mustard seeds just for one bottle. There's always strength in numbers. That's right. If you're struggling with a class, why not use visiting our on campus tu tutors? And our very own Dusty did a story on it. So a lot of students here at Butler have math classes here in the 1500 building but if you're needing some help and needing some math tutoring it's actually here in building 200. I've had classes in El Dorado and I never heard about the tutoring lab here until I became a tutor so I don't know how many people actually know about uh, the tutoring lab here and someone mentioned earlier it actually doesn't even say tutoring lab outside it says like learning lab and people are like all right what's that mean like what's that place would you say that tutoring helps? Yes, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, even if you don't have even if you don't think you have any work to do, you will always have work to do and that it kind of reminds you that you do have work and it makes you get it done because you're not they're not going to allow you to sit in there and do nothing. You have to do something. So, it definitely helps. I'd say so. I'd say most of the tutors that are here, I mean, some of the student tutors have gone all the way up to differential equations, so they could literally tell you anything needed for math. Here in El Dorado now that they have the, the separate math tutoring lab, a lot of the uh, math professors use that for their tutoring, whereas in Andover, since all of the uh, tutoring subjects are together, so there I think there's one or two math teachers that come in to help. They offer is what's called Net Tutor. I personally have never used it. Um, it's available to you if you go to your Canvas page as a student, kind of in the left margin, there's still it says Net Tutor. Um, I know it's available throughout the day, or if like you send uh, a question for, say, math, say you're in college algebra and you send a question, I know they usually try to get back to you within 24 hours. And then the tutor manager, Crystal Aluko, she's actually in the works of trying to find ways where tutors can do like video sessions with people, say they can't come into campus or, you know, because there's a lot of non-traditional students who don't really actually come to campus. And they do lots of subjects, it's not just math, I mean, uh, me personally, I can do almost all your basic prereqs. I mean, English, math, uh, chemistry, all the biologies. And then there's literally teachers for every one of those subjects, like uh, Karen Carr, or K Squared as they call her. She's uh, one of the chemistry instructors. She's here, and she's had like large groups of chemistry students coming in for, for help and stuff. So, yeah, it's a, it's a vital aspect. I mean, I think everybody at some point or in some semester of their schooling career struggles with something, so take advantage of all these things that are offered as a student here. As you can see, there are plenty of ways to get help with your homework, not with just math, but any other subject as well. But this is BCTV Channel 20. I'm Dusty Vancey, signing off. We'll be right back after this short break. Be sure to stick around. You must see how this episode ends.
I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Mustard seeds aren't always like people. They have to be planted in the soil in order to grow, whereas humans can stay wherever they so please. And on that subject, our very own Ryan Harbour does a story on places to stay if the dorms aren't for you. Why don't we give it a whirl? Living arrangements is probably the most uh, important thing that all college students think about when they move to college. And usually they think, oh, I gotta live in the dorms, oh, I gotta live in the dorms, oh, I gotta live in the dorms. Well, that's not exactly true. There are tons of options out there. I lived in the dorms my first semester, and now, in fact, I live somewhere else. And this is one of the first options that you have, is living with your own family. The first semester, I lived in the dorms, and I quickly found out that I did not like doing that. And so I moved in with my aunt and uncle in Bel Air. And so far, I think that it was the perfect decision for me. I get my own space. I am around family a lot more. Uh, free food, that's always a good thing. And the best thing is uh, they have a dog. Everyone needs a fluffy animal, but when said dog decides to not let you film her, um, and then you have to uh, chase her around the house a lot, in order to get anything done. Even when you tempt her with treats, she doesn't want to come. And so she hides in the darkest spot of the house and makes it hard to film. So that's a downer, I guess. But besides that, uh, it's probably the best decision I've made since coming to Butler Community College. Our very own illustrious Steven Steinbacker lives in an apartment himself and there are multiple other apartments that you can live in, but let's go look at his. Welcome. This is our home. This is our crib. Dusty's just always here. He uh, likes to hang around. This is our living room and our kitchen areas. Italian films like Suspiria or La Dolce Vita. Uh, some interesting Blu-rays like Space Cop or The FP, and Australian films like Wake in Fright. Now this is Dusty's couch. It smells a little bit like cigarettes. Uh, we actually got it from Tyler's dying aunt, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a tragic story. I don't know why he's making light of it. This is Tyler's bathroom where he does all of his manscaping. This is my room. As you can see as we enter here, I'm a man who uh, appreciates a nice poster. If you were to take a look at my, uh, say, Wu-Tang poster here on my bathroom door, uh, you would see the RZA, the Jizza, uh, the ODB, uh, Method Man, Raekwon, Ghostface, all of them. Along with that, we have a Scratch and Sniff Suicide Squad poster. And while the movie may have made me want to partake in some of the festivities in the title, uh, it is rather nice. and. <laughs> Mm, marshmallow. Uh, here's my bed. It's an air mattress that only has one hole in it. Here's where I just, I don't have a computer anymore. Tyler took it. So I just kind of look at the monitor and it just stays there. It's not plugged in. Um, I can't afford the electricity. This one never wants to stay up. I think it's because it's ashamed of a, a certain film that was made and it's branding this year. But, uh, I mean, it's still nice to marvel at. I believe this is actually an original uh, 1980s print. Uh, it was handed down to me by a teacher. Along with The Goonies, which is everybody's favorite Richard Donner film, much better than Superman 2. We have Guardians of the Galaxy as well. I actually think the drawing here is quite ugly. I don't, I don't like uh, the way they draw Batista's face, or I don't like the way they really kind of blend the digital space look in with the, the hard cartoon colors. This is my closet. It's a bit of a mess right now. Uh, if you were to go up here, you could see my Braves hat. I got this when I was a small child. <coughs> this is for uh, David Fincher's infamous 2006 film Zodiac. I won this online in a competition. 
It also came with a Megamind and an Aeon Flux poster. I gave Tyler the Megamind one and my dad the Aeon Flux. So yeah, that's my home. I'm Campus Ed reporter Ryan Harbour. Before we go, I got one more option for you. A good old box! I wouldn't try this option. Ugh, that is no place to live. You disgust me, Tyler. Well, I am a bottle of mustard. I can't stray too far from soil. Why not? You never did Girl Scout cookies? Hey, I was a daisy, thank you very much. I just quit when they wouldn't give me an adventure badge. Really? Then maybe you'll find Andrew Leonard's piece on Girl Scouts interesting. The Girl Scouts of America have been a staple in American history since their founding in 1912. Looking for a bit of insight, I stopped by the Girl Scouts of Kansas Heartland for a bit of information. Girl Scouts goes K through 12th grade, and it starts in kindergarten with daisies, and then brownies, and then juniors, and then um, cadets, and then seniors and ambassadors all the way through high school. You can join Girl Scouts at any time, so you don't have to start out in daisies, brownies, and uh, you know juniors to be a Girl Scout. You could come in at high, high school age and join Girl Scouts in 10th grade, for example. And if you're in 9th through 12th grade in Girl Scouts, you have the opportunity to earn the Girl Scout Gold Award, which is the highest award a Girl Scout can earn. The Girl Scout Gold Award entails, it's pretty much a two-year project, and girls are working on making their world a better place through sustainable take-action projects. So they start by identifying an issue or maybe a problem in their community that they want to solve. And then they work together putting together their uh, take action plan. So this year we're celebrating 100 years of Girl Scout cookies. It's a really exciting time for us here. Our Girl Scout cookie sale is going on through March 19th. And Girl Scout cookies uh, started in 1917. The first troop that started selling Girl, Girl Scout cookies or basically came up with the idea was in Muskogee, Oklahoma. So there was a troop in Muskogee, Oklahoma that decided, you know, they wanted to raise some money to support their projects in the community. And so they started making homemade cookies and selling them and the idea spread. So a hundred years later, you know, Girl Scout cookies is still a major part of being able to fund those opportunities for girls. Thin Mints are the most popular, followed pretty closely by Caramel Delights and then Peanut Butter Patties. Those are pretty much, they pretty much round out the top three. But we do have a new cookie this year that's really popular called the S'mores Cookie. And the S'mores Cookie is celebrating 100 years of Girl Scout cookies. The S'more is, it's like a graham cookie covered with um, cream icing and then it's coated in chocolate. And people, we're getting some really great feedback that people love the S'mores Cookie. So that's also, we're hoping, going to be pretty popular. I wish I'd stuck around a bit longer. I guess I'm not just cut out to be a cadet. Hey, it's never too late. Actually, it is. I'm almost two years old. Oh, my. That's the shelf life for a mustard, isn't it? Yeah. I could go any minute now. Well, we can't have that happen on TV. Roll the next package. I'm Campus Edge reporter Adam Denton, here to talk with one of the coolest instructors on campus, Mr. Bob Peterson. The camera is my friend. Hello, friends, who are out there. All those beautiful people in the dark. Uh, my favorite part of my, my job is coming to school every day. I've always had this feeling that I'm the luckiest person in the world because I don't come to a job. I don't come to work. I come to have this wonderful time and this wonderful experience. So my favorite part of coming every day is just getting to come here and working with not only fine students, but with wonderful colleagues who inspire me. It's my favorite part. My inspirations? It's interesting because somehow the muse hits. Uh, you're inspired by something you see uh, that's happening around you. You're inspired by all the beauty around you. You're inspired by birds flying in the air, by the wind going through trees, uh, and things that happen. You're inspired by other people and their activities and their events, so that really inspires me. 
Interesting because, you know, Richard Rogers always said when they would say that to him, what is your favorite show you've ever, your favorite show that you've done? And he will always say, he always said, it's the last production that I'm working on or the production I'm working on now or the last thing I worked on. That would be his favorite show. Um, I, I, I think I think that too. It's, it's what I'm working on now. And I'm working now on a play called Hairdo, which is a show that I wrote. And it, it really is, at this point, one of my favorite things I've ever done. So I, and I don't think that's a cop-out answer. I don't think that's cheesy. I think that that's honest because we, you know, if you like what you do, it's what you're working on then. So I, I, I value and treasure that every time I'm working on that play. Sure, Hairdo was originally called Barbershop Quartet, which was four, a quartet of plays, four plays with four actors or characters in each play. So in other words, the same four boys play the parts. So it's four, four different shows and they each deal with hair. Something in this show, motives, there was something is motivated uh, it, by the hair. That it wasn't, that didn't sound right, did it? It's the motivating story that progresses the plot has to do with hair. And so, it was called Barbershop Quartet. Well, I wanted to rewrite the show to see if it would work with 21st Sense technology. This show was written 20 years ago, so there was no such, such, such thing as cell phones. So I wondered, would cell phones work? Or things like that. So I was reworking it, and I realized that we are doing a show in the black box, Room 766, uh, this year, and it would be a perfect material for that. And I realized I wanted to do just two of them because it would be under, like, under an hour, a nice evening a nice sit, if you will. And uh, so therefore, I was taking these shows about hair and uh, didn't realize I didn't have a quartet anymore. I had two. So du, D-E-U-X, which is du, is French for two, hair du. That's precious, ain't it? There you are. Whatever your passion is, you have to be interested in something else. Because the more interest you have outside what you love, the better you're going to be at what you do. I don't get to do a lot of it like I used to, but I love to cook and bake. I think that's it's just so much fun. It's therapeutic. It's terrific. I love to work in a flower garden and I uh, very much like to collect. I'm a collector of presidential trivia and presidential items. And so that's what I like to do. I like to cook. I like to garden and I like to collect. Well this year of course we're doing the Children's Theater show to make a plant girl plus hairdo in the black box and then we're going to be closing with uh, the marvelous Auntie Mame. Uh, I've really been so pleased this year because our first shows we did the Shakespearean show which was terrific and then we did um, Where's Charlie which is a show with great male roles with fine girl roles and Auntie Mame has great women's roles with very fine male roles. So I'm really excited to work with it. And, and Auntie Mame is about conformity versus non-conformity and conformity and the friendship between the boy, the nephew, and Auntie Mame and the friendships that they all have. So I'm really looking forward to that. For Campus Edge, I am Adam Denton. Well, oh boy, that's all we have for the Campus Edge today. Thank goodness, because I was running about out of mustard facts. If you love this show as much as I do and want to see more, check out the reruns of this show weekdays at 11 a.m. or last week's show at 6.30 p.m. on BCTV Channel 20. Or you can even check them all out on our YouTube channel, Butler Student Media. Oh, and I'm fine. I was just unclogging my nozzle. Just because I've passed my expiration date doesn't mean I'm spoiled. Well anyway, thanks for tuning in. This has been The, the Campus, Campus Edge. Edge.